Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Just Another Kill Team Podcast, where we are linking you with Kill Team communities around the globe, which is especially true today as we're jumping all the way over to hear about the Polish scene with our special guest, Matthew. Matt, Matt, Mateusz. <laughs> Again. Yeah, now, now you've got to tell us all the, um, the real pronunciation. Mateusz Mikołajczyk. Let's try. <laughs> but, but not now, please. All right. Um, hello, and thank you for the invitation. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Matt. We wanted to catch up with you because I know that uh, as far as the Polish face or face or uh, Polish kill team scene, sounds like you guys have a pretty solid large base. You, I think the tournament that I found you guys with was a 30 person tournament on Facebook. Uh, depends. Uh, the last masters in Poland was 56. Okay. So cool. usually we have quarterly bigger tournaments over for between 40 and 50 people basically. Also there is a series of many smaller tournaments and there are between everything between 10 to 25 26 people. This is something which is ongoing maybe not weekly but every two weeks in Poland in different part or sometimes simultaneously in different regions. Uh, because we have our national league here, which is divided into regions. Uh, but quarterly, we have our masters, as I said. So 50, uh, between 40 and 50 for now. But of course, we will do our best to make it bigger now. Now we are planning our next masters to go between 60 or seven to 70. We will see how, how it happened in the end. Yeah, I think in our pre-show notes, we were talking, or you mentioned that you play a lot of Veteran Guard and you switched over to Inquisition more recently. And it sounds like you get a lot of play in some of these tournaments, maybe? Outside of just running them? Uh, I think that two years playing Vets as a main is enough. So I switched to Inquisition, as you said, yeah, but I was very hardcore Veteran uh, Guard main. Like, it was my, I am always telling that it is the true masculine faction for true masculine men, the only one, and the rest are just pretending. But now I switched, uh, and be before recording, as you said, I switched to Inquisition, who also have guard in different shames, and there are also separated guardsmen there. So it is, it is a nice excuse to finally change, uh, because I'm fed up. But yeah, I run with veteran guardsmen. I even don't know how many tournaments. I really don't know, but probably above 40, I would say. This is. You've played in nice. above 40 tournaments or 40 games? With, with, with uh, 40, 40 tournaments with vets. Only wow. vets. So, so it is. Uh, and this is, as I said, this is a he uh, hesitant gamble, really. So it, it, can, it can, be, can be quite more, but I don't know. And I okay. want. Go farther yeah. with guessing. But yeah, I guess I have uh, some uh, knowledge about <laughs> playing that guard. Uh, but I think that finally I've reached the level that I don't want to play them any longer, really. I stuck for too long already, for a couple times too long. Uh, and I will go with other teams now. I was, of course, always playing also different teams, but it was always my main because I had yeah. to play different ones, but I was always playing to learn how to beat them better with the bad guard. This was the main reason. And now I'm just playing them and having fun. <laughs> so. so you mostly <laughs> just switch away from that guard because you, you're looking for something fresh. Uh, but otherwise, do you think they still can hang in the current meta? Uh, now, not. Yeah. Because of Colts, Felgors, and especially Inquisition, because uh, that guard is this piece of cake which is very heavily relying on uh, their ploys. Without their ploys they are basically st struggling to do anything, especially on Into the Dark. Uh, and uh, Inquisition with current nope, how, how we are uh, naming that, uh, how it works, it are basically out of the meta, but it will be fixed very soon, so they will be returning them uh, there and will be still a capable team to play with. But I simply don't want to come back to them, at least for now. But it is like very, very short time when it will be fixed. So I don't you get care. To play. I don't know why I'm, uh, why I'm switching. 
Adorable. And you get to play with the best parts of Veteran Guard in Inquisition in the meantime, right? No, because the best part of the uh, Veteran Guard is their sergeant who is absent. There, okay. So sorry. No, like you it. do get the combo of the of the explosive guy with the comms, which is still pretty solid. Uh, yeah, but I uh, in Inquisition there are better things uh, to do. Basically. So which ancillary? Uh... Section are you using the most often with your? This is tricky, uh, que this is tricky question. You which I can I'm not allowed to answer too much because I know what will happen very soon with Inquisition. So when I am now preparing for the tournaments, I am preparing as they will play in the short time, not as they am, as are playing. If, uh, at, uh, now, but uh, now obviously breachers are way to go. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it will change a little bit. Yeah, the Breachers, to me, has always seemed maybe a little touch strong to have the same number of guys as Veteran Guard with better stats and similar ploys. And They are not the same amount of people. They are one less. Uh, breachers breachers are six, six to Veteran Guard six, no? Six plus seven, and Vet Guard is uh, 14. No, I meant uh, on Inquisition, when you mix them in on the Inquisition side. As I said, 6 plus, yeah. plus 7 for now. Mm -hmm. And Vetguard is 14. So Vetguard is still superior in numbers, but it is not enough because obviously they have uh, one operative less. Sure, no problem, because almost, almost all of them are better. <laughs> this yeah. is one thing we think. Better saves, etc., etc. Bigger flexibility. Uh, mm -hmm. And as I said, they are taking away from Vetguard what is most important for Vetguard, so they ploys. And if Vetguard cannot, for example, in Into the Dark, go with the dash in the first turn, and after that, uh, Inquisition is basically every turn denying you in Death Atonement, you are losing your stopping power. Vetguard already have quite a struggle on Into the Dark. It also depends, of course, on the scenario. Uh, Bomber cannot be everywhere, and also Inquisition is expert into denying Bomber, because even if you will win initiative in second, because you are going risky play, they will simply slow your Bomber and slaughter him, so... Yeah, it will yeah, be yeah. It will be I mean, the Inquisition, the Inquisition clearly have probably one of the most powerful tool sets with when you actually know what your opponent wants to do, because you can specifically scalpel out parts of their strategy before they have a chance to interact with you, unlike most teams. Yeah, on the other hand, they don't have a very good ploys on for their own, uh, so they don't have a tool set to reliably buff their own operatives. This is the problem yeah. here. It's uh, just got worry. Yeah, yeah, they are, they are, yeah, which is like, he survived and he escaped. Um, good, good CP is going somewhere uh, else. Uh, uh, somewhere else, and uh, you cannot uh, rely on this reroll any longer. Uh, they are more about denying teams how they should play, yeah, but uh, but it will be better. It will That's be good. better. That's Still, Inquisition here. is very cool, very cool. Uh, I like it because of this flexibility. Uh, I am player which whenever I am playing, I'm always loving hybrid type of playing. Like in World of Warcraft, I like I loved Shaman for example because he was healing, doing some melee damage and some uh, range damage uh, at once. So uh, Vetguard was probably not the best choice for me. Commando were better, always. But I loving. I am a Flav guy, which is the biggest curse of the competitive player that I am the Flav guy. So, for example, if I want to play with orcs, my orcs are also kit bashed for the Vetguard because reasons. Uh, with Goliath from Necromunda, so sorry, everything can be uh, Vetguard. Uh, I mean Imperial Guard rather, if you are uh, determined enough. So. But Inquisition is really cool, and I think it is the this this team which is very uh, beneficial for the players who have a very big experience in the game. Because as you said, they are they simply know when and what have to be denied to basically destroy somebody's day. Because I now uh, want to charge with my rust stalkers, and they will kill two per one because I will double fight. No, you won't. Nope. Yeah, and your day is ruined, and the momentum is uh, fading. So I think this is the very nice thing for people like me. Also, the access for the all archetypes. So you have to understand basically 
all the game, you have all the aspects, you have melee play, you have shooting play, you have indirects, you have smokes, you have basically everything. I love them because of that, really. Yeah, it'll be good at the end of the podcast when we loop back around to the Inquisition uh, shoutouts or like the niche tactics where we can get really into all the space for the Inquisition. But right now, I'm just curious, you know, the community, I think locally, there's been a lot of talk about the melee teams just taking over. Is it the same thing in Poland? Because you guys are still also doing mixed tournaments, right? I think in the U.S., the GW official tournaments have moved to an all open format. I know the tournament that I'm running later in August is probably going to be more open than in the dark. Just as a slight nod to how maybe some teams are slightly too strong on in the dark, I'm just wondering how are the how's the Polish scene adapting to melee summer? Uh, we also have fifty fifty, uh, and of course melee is a problem mm-hmm. uh, as everywhere because we are basically playing the same game. I mean, on the open it can be kind of different uh, because of the layout of terrains. We are not agreeing with usually what we we, we are seeing in uh, American stables, but we are more in the the same bag with the Spanish guys. Um, But this doesn't matter here. On Into the Dark, it is obviously the same. Uh, And yeah, it is the problem. And I already stated that, that for example, when you are playing uh, Vetguard, it is kind of struggle. When Vetguard are not in such a bad position because they have a lot of gunners, they have that surge in the end, they have the bomb, etc. But still, yeah, uh, melee teams are because of existence of Into the Dark taking a little bit of lead here, uh, but this problem is known for the designers that it is basically happening. Uh, so I think it will be addressed, and it is addressed in every balance patch that every yeah. team like uh, Nerf for. Charges for intercessors are also rather the problem of Into the Dark because they were able to basically charge through the room uh, and uh, now they are not as o- uh, always able to do so because of that nerf. So yeah, it is a problem also here. We are not on the different planet, even if we are in Poland. Uh, but uh, yeah, what? we have the same struggle. Yeah. But we are totally fine with that in the end. Just curious, well, how are uh, what kind of teams are Polish players using to adapt to the Colts and Goats, or has every are people the top player upper crust of players just joining the side of the melee melee teams? Uh, no, we are more about hybrid play, I guess. Uh, also, there are not many Colts and Goats uh, players here here because we can be a little bit nasty when you are taking a broken sheet, basically. So nobody wants to be this guy here because it can be really disga- disgusting. Uh, for example, when we had a uh, one drop zone tournament, when the Pathfinders had their golden broken moment right after the release, uh, the, there was a, basically a boycott here and nobody took them mm-hmm. for the biggest tournaments uh, because this is how this community here works. It is also auto-balancing sometimes, so I can be quite quite proud of them. Uh, and, but they are, of course, more and more showing up. But as I said, this is the problem which I am not living with because I know that it will be basically fixed very soon, so I don't care. I don't care about this. And uh, I knew for a very long time that it will happen, so... I basically already slept with this problem. <laughs> I survived this. It will be better. Yeah, I have a little bit I'm, of faith. I'm curious to hear a little bit about the the behind the scenes and like running the tournaments. So, like, where did you source the terrain? Is that coming from shops? Are people bringing their own terrain? Um, or like, when it comes to terrain, are you doing player placed or fixed layouts? And then, in general, like, do you have designated people that are managing the events, or is everyone there playing as well? The Robson, as an organization, is the sum of some basically friends who have our own uh, setups uh, for uh, t- layouts. Sorry, it is quite late here. Please forgive me. I'm no tired. Uh, but uh, we have many layouts for many tables here as our private. Uh, thing and we are summing up this basically for now as a drop zone we have so many 
Of course, everything is painted, just to be clear. We are able to support over 100 people events with fully painted uh, GW original terrains uh, without any ugly MDF style, uh, thing or anything like that. Everything on hard plastic from GW with the competitive layouts with enough of heavy, enough of light, 50% uh, of into the dark. Uh, in other regions, uh, because Drop Zone is situated in Warsaw, uh, in other regions it is like uh, they are usually summing up with the uh, basically players are giving their terrains and their layouts uh, when the tournament is happening. Also, every region here can uh, raise their hand and drop them, then we'll be supporting them. So we can, for example, send them some layouts to be used on their tournaments if they will have an issue. So we build the whole procedures, uh, the whole system. I'm also in my uh, professional uh, life a uh, process engineer so we've built that it's so there are many backups for everything and it is never collapsing basically so if they are not able to support and they are seeing that okay this we are prepared for the event for 20 people but we are approaching to, uh, 30 and we don't have enough of tables the in two days they will be uh, they will receive table this or other way so it is always working here Without any MDF, we are not accepting that here, nothing like that. So you mentioned the, the drop zone a couple of times in that explanation. You want to talk about the drop zone a little bit to our listeners who probably don't know what that is? Good moment, good moment, yeah, yeah. Uh, drop zone is an organization which is, which is basically managing Polish kill team community. We started with building our own tournament. The first one was right month after the release of the second edition, like a... Uh, 24 people, maybe 26, I don't even remember. And after some time, we started to build bigger and bigger uh, uh, tournaments. They were biggest in Poland. And people also started to recognize us because we were the guys who were always driving around the country for the other tournaments and consolidating every, everybody under our banner. So after some time, they started to asking us, hey, how about making national championships? And we were just sending them, why are you looking at me? <laughs> and, <laughs> and people started to expecting that they view us as leaders by natural natural way of, because, uh, of uh, thinking, because we were basically everywhere. When something was happening in the kill team, we were there. So we decided, okay, so we are going different way. And now, now supposedly, we are an organization which is organizing the Polish nationals. Ba ba ba, yeah. And so we organized, and after that, people were asking, okay, and now we need a national league here in, in Poland. And uh, why are you watching at me again? Yada yada yada. So in the end, we basically took over everything. So we are doing Polish uh, a podcast in Polish, dedicated to Polish players, because we decided that for people abroad, there are uh, very many sources like you guys, for example, yeah? And we don't need with our strong banana Polish accent in English to go in any competition with you. This is not our goal because people will be fine with you. Basically targeting our own guys here because here we are building our community. Uh, and for ourselves, it is the, something like a side thing. For ourselves, the most important things which we are uh, doing daily is um, growing our community. So we are leading academies here uh, to school new players. All in other regions, it is happening uh, the same. And we are building tournaments and we are leading this league, national league, which I mentioned. So we divided Poland into sub-regions and where when there was a live community somewhere, we were basically taking somebody who was a natural leader there and giving him, for now there are only men there, which is a shame, uh, but still it is what it is. It's a struggle uh, in, our, in our hobby. Yeah, 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 everywhere, but we had one, we had one woman, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, she uh, is struggling with, with her time, so she had to resign, uh, but it was, it was, we are proud to announce that we had one. Uh, mm -hmm. and. We divided the country, so they are basically managing the league. So we use this power to also encourage some standards. So when you are going from anywhere in the world, 
uh, to Poland and you want to enter our tournament, when you will see the note that it is uh, part of the Polish National League, you can be quite sure that there will be a standard of the good terrain layouts, that everything will be painted, that uh, there will be uh, trophies for top three, that there will be prize pool, etc., etc. Uh, it will be lit, lit, uh, lit in BCP, it will be noted in ITC, everything, everything. So we took all, all the poll under our banner and we are now... It is ugly to say control, but this is the truth also. We are always joking that there is no democracy in Polish kill team because we don't have time for democracy uh, in Polish kill team. Uh, yeah, and here I should end... <laughs> Probably. No, it sounds it sounds like a lot of work. I know on my end, I'm running, you know, just a local regional tournament, and that's still it takes a lot of work to get a bunch of people into the same room. So hearing that you guys are getting fifty to sixty, you know, every other quarter sounds very impre impressive. And I'm sure a lot of listeners who are listening are probably very jealous. Oh, about we having in a regular Poland to laugh when somebody is jealous about us. This is our national be be best fruit. So tell me more. But <laughs> still, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> joke is that, yeah, this is a lot of work, but there are 12 of us here in Drop Zone. Uh, so everybody have their own uh, uh, topics to manage. Basically, one is from social media, one is uh, the main coordinator of the league, uh, the uh, the third uh, the third one is managing mailbox yada 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 uh, be, because in the end there are a bazillion of little tasks which are starting to cannibalize you every day when you are so big because we are receiving like from the one uh, in one moment we are trying to set up some tournament here also in Warsaw to basically set, have something between drop zones but in the same time you are receiving three different uh, messages uh, on our profile how something is working so we are also sol solving this thing we are managing also kill team Polska, which is a facebook group for 2000 people uh, uh, people there uh, of polish kill team uh, so you know we are kind of everywhere we are coordinating also uh, our uh, Cooperations with uh, sponsors who are giving quite a big mm -hmm. prize pool uh, prize pools for for our tournaments. Uh, so yeah, there is a lot of work. That's why we expanded also because when we were starting, there was like a five of us, and now are, there are twelve. And I think it is not the end because we are not counting uh, coordinators from the regions. They are outside of that. So with the coordinators, it is about twenty people uh, for now, and it will it will expand. For sure. With those leagues, um, how are those leagues run? Are they monthly leagues? Like, you know, what's the or is it kind of disaggregated? Each each different region has their own league structures. They can have uh, local leagues, which we are not interested in. This is their uh, local thing. And mm -hmm. in our league, the local coordinator. So, for example, coordinator of Poznań, Karol, have basically all the power there. He, he is the powerful guy there and he's saying something and his word is low as long as his word is not going <laughs> against our word, of course. But it no always does. No, no, never, it never happens like that. Don't worry. Everything under control. I am the Senate. Uh, but <laughs> but still. Have there been... Uh, actually, on that point, I'm just curious. I know that Spain... Spain has some translation issues that have kind of bled out into some other rules, rules things that have come up or on the American side. I'm wondering, do you know of any Polish examples of the translation team causing the Polish scene to play something differently no. than the rest of the world for some reason? No, we, we have our uh, books in, uh, in English and in Pol Poland standard of speaking uh, and reading in English. Maybe I'm not, not the best example, but... Almost all young people who are uh, going with Warhammer can fluently speak English, or at least to the level level when they can uh, read the rule set. Even, if, for example, on Drop Zone, when somebody is coming here from abroad, we are basically switching to English for the whole tournament. Uh, even if there is, for example, one person for 50, we are always doing that. This is the, our Polish holy rule of hospitality. Sounds uh, very kind. Uh, 
this is how uh, how we are doing this here and also this is not an issue for ourselves because we are basically speaking english mm. so no this is not a problem here not at all and i was in spanish and yes they have some problems with yeah there was a hand i think there was there was something that i feel like there was a lot of spanish discussion around something i don't remember exactly what it was but they had always said one of the rules worked a certain way and everyone else that i had talked to was like I don't really understand why they keep saying this. And then someone found out that there was an actual translation issue on the Spanish side that basically caused that difference, which was weird. Yeah, I, I remember when I was playing tournament in Spain and I was playing against a guy who was basically not speaking English at all. So it was mm -hmm. a struggle, even if he was really a cheerful guy. And in general, they are in Spanish, very kind and all of that. I cannot say the bad word. We are rather as a... Polish, uh, they are calling us the cold people compared to them. Yeah, we are cold. <laughs> but but still, it was a hilarious situation when he was trying to explain me what he's doing. Uh, and I told to him, dude, Spanish, no, no, no funny, <laughs> not, not, nothing, uh, nothing. And he grabbed his core, uh, not core book, but his uh, army book, the kill team book, basically. Mm -hmm. And he showed and he showed me the same thing, and I watched on him again. This is the Spanish. Do you remember? So yeah, but this is. I think in the Italy it can be quite similar because they are also have a specific uh, a specific relationship with the English language. Mm -hmm. uh, but here in Poland, it's not an issue at all. I see. Yeah, I was just curious if that had actually come yeah, up. Yeah. It sounds like because you were talking about basically having different level of judges. So I was wondering, you know, maybe that would be a spot where it could come up. It doesn't sound like it, which is good to hear. It sounds like the Polish scene is a very tight scene compared to the U.S., which is each region feels very yes. distinct. Sometimes. As I said, for, for here, not, you are not going aside. You are not going your own way. We don't have time for that. There have to be standards. We have to play good. In general, in Poland, we are quite good to put it mildly, into playing miniatures games. Mm -hmm. I would prefer that we had better talents, like, I don't know, geopolitics or something like that, or, or building rich economy, but we have that. Uh, so we don't have time. Is uh, there a large GW presence in Poland? Because I know, I assume that you have a handful of players going out to the Atlanta Championships later this year, but I'm just curious. I don't know what you understand by the GW presence. Uh, do you mean, are there any shops here? Official No, ones? are there... Um, so in the US, we have a series of the GW Opens that necessarily add like a golden ticket to the World Championship. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, is it all grassroots in Poland or is there a official GW tournament that you guys can go to to try to get a ticket to the World no, Championships? GW is in general ignoring Europe besides UK. And this is I very similar... I think Spain has one or one ticket, I think. We but... also have had one ticket. Okay. And, the, right. and Spanish, for example, uh, have the biggest kill team community in the world. For sure. Yeah, so they this do. This is a disaster. And Poland, Poland is also a big community. Uh, we are basically top four in the world, and we are receiving only one ticket. Without your yeah, foundation. It definitely sounds like that. It's like, I'm super impressed with the with the scene that you described. That sounds amazing. And like in the US, we're all spread out. Like there's there's basically no overlap between my scene and Travis's scene, even though we're both in the US. I mean, Minnesota to New, to New York is a very long ways away. <laughs> it feels like it feels like quite a distance. Yeah, but you know, also your uh, country is kind of big. I just want to remind you. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, also the factor here, I believe. Uh, also, you you know we were not planning that in the end, but we are it going very good with that, and it just happened, and people ex expected from ourselves to lead. So now it is working. Uh, but just to answer your question, when we beginning before we run somewhere else, there are the local leagues which we don't care, but the Polish national league is a sum of tournament. Basic, as simple as that. So mm -hmm. if you want some tournament to be noted in Polish National League, you have to contact the main coordination, who is Wojtek Wesołowski now, uh, another hard surname. Uh, so you are contacting them and then he have to approve this timing. 
that you are not cannibalizing, for example, with the mm. next city, which is like 50 or 100 uh, kilometers away, to not uh, divide community. And then it is set up in our official calendar, and you can go with the tournament only if you will meet requirements. So there are some requirements that they have to be trophies for top three, etc., etc. That it have to be lead in BCP, it have to have ITC uh, points, everything. So if any of these uh, factors won't be met, met in the end, it is not going to push Polish National League. And in the end, it is like every player have a standing in that league, and it is two masters, two majors, and five locals tournament. The best you played, obviously. That sounds like an intense scene. And I guess you get to play in a handful of them because you're not always running every tournament. You're helping to do logistics, or do you are you uh, pushed out of being able to play like a lot of us tournament organizers in the US are? <laughs> no, no, no. I always said that. For me, not playing is a deal breaker. I am doing that for myself to have the biggest and the best tournaments here. Sorry. Uh, there are also people in Drop Zone who are mm, usually assigned to lead the tournaments, to be not playing TOs because they chose that, because they are, for example, daily not able to play and practice. So they know that they don't have any chance of winning, but they still want to do something for hobby because. For example, they have two children, wife, extra hours at work, and they are unable to play like two, three times per week in the club, uh, kill team and practice. But this one time in quarter, they will be playing. And also, we always discourage our local co coordinations from dif uh, coordinators from different regions uh, to not play. Uh, we are rather encouraging them to play, but to assign people from their community. As I said, the local coordinate, uh, coordinator is the second only to Pope there, basically. Uh, so, and they can assign different people to support them. Because I'm always saying that you are not a Jesus. You should not suffer because you are leading. You leading is also... Uh, there have to be some price for leading. There have to be something good for you. Like recognition, good work, anything, some additional bonuses, but never that you are not playing because you have to lead tournament and you have only costs. It is a bullshit. Sorry. Uh, we are not going this way here. Never. No, that's good. I mean, sounds like Poland is a very healthy, very active scene. So excited to see. I would not see. say it's healthy, but it's <laughs> working. Well, it'll be cool to see how you guys do when you hit the Atlanta championships for whoever ends up making it. I mean, if there are any Polish people that end up traveling to other regions who can secure a ticket, that would also be Kamil very cool Jemik to see how you guys Pardus. do. Kamil Jemik Pardus will go from our drop zone because he won the golden ticket. Mm -hmm. I will also try to win the golden ticket. We'll see. Maybe I will be able, maybe not. Uh, but... Maybe next year, if not this year, we will see. But still, for sure, there will be at least one Polish representative there for now. Yeah. So getting back to, you know, non-tournament stuff, we're going into one of our sections, the operative showdown for this week. <laughs> yes, here we are. Let's kick off the operative showdown. Operative showdown. And I'm just curious, you know, we could talk about VetGuard a little bit here, because it seems like you have a little bit of expertise on both VetGuard and Inquisition, among other teams, it sounds like. So which combos of two operatives do you find the most useful? I have here noted for the spotter combos, because I know everyone always starts with the spotter sniper, but, you know, which other pairs did you actually like for the spotter? I, I'm not s such a fan of Spotter. Uh, I know that everybody is, but there are matchups when he is basically useless. Because, for example, are there matchups where you switch him out? Uh, Harley Kings with Domino Field. Why take Spotter? Cool. It is the waste of operative. You will never shoot him unless you, your opponent is basically a potato, and then he, he is not your problem because he will kill himself. So you don't have to play. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. But for your less, you know, the combos that you don't enjoy playing, because spotter is kind of whatever, which yeah, ones also... outside of the sniper one do you play and get use out of? Of course, uh, comms plus search plus bomber, because search can give that one additional one to move, 
which mm-hmm. is very crucial sometimes uh, as a vet guard. Uh, it makes sense uh, stealing on into the dark somebody's points. We, if you will go, for example, on some layouts, I don't remember the number of layouts, sorry. Uh, but if you will go with dash with the first one, uh, f- uh, first uh, ploy, mm-hmm. and then you have two guys on the group activation, and you will use as an order move move move, not not uh, take aim. You are able to run, open the door, and with the second guy run into somebody rooms and click, for example, his points on loot. Uh, I made that bazillion of times against, for example, orcs players, which were uh, reacting like. Ugh! like usually orcs are doing, so uh, how, how it happened, uh, it is also um, many times very useful. I like the combo of uh, Confident, second in command, and for example uh, Hardnet with Crack Grenade, it also sometimes is working, that you are opening with the Confident uh, door, and with Hardnet mm-hmm. you are running and throwing Crack, or against Tau, you can risk and give him APL in the previous turn to uh, charge, kill, and then throw, crack, crack, something like that. But uh, it is very nasty combo, but it is also counterable, and it won't work up against everything, but it is always uh, worth uh, uh, um, thinking about it. But I still, in the end, think that uh, Vetgard is not the... Bazinga type of play, as I am calling that uh, team. It is more mm-hmm. about being engineer, because as Vedgard, there are many situations that you will basically do one mistake and this is end of your game. When on the same time, people from the different side who are playing intercessors, jailer pox, uh, orcs, they are doing mistakes, by, mistake by mistake, and they are surviving because reasons and they are just a scratching and uh, 300 feel no pains and you don't have nothing for that. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, correct playing of Vetgard in the end is almost never about Gambit and about relying on, on some nasty combo. It is rather about being very patient, never over exceeding your resources and going slowly. Phase by phase, because many vet guards are struggling because they are risking too much and they are out of the table in turn three. They are losing bodies too fastly. Uh, so it is all about also uh, managing the distance and never be greedy. Never, uh, I, I am almost never, I was never greed in uh, playing vet guard, and this year I'm not doing so well because of many reasons, also personal life. But the last year I had basically 96.7 win rate with Vetgard so on the tournament win rate. So I think it is the correct way to play them. This is a very impressive win rate. For, for that win rate, uh, between the melee confident and the bolter confidant, were there, you know, it sounds like maybe you aren't playing the melee confidant as much, or are you using him so that you actually have some extra melee threats on the board? Or was it's, it a matchup? When I'm call? playing confident, I am using the melee variant. The melee variant. I even even in matchups when on the first glance it, it can have no sense to compete in melee anyhow with the other side. There are many situations that you are missing that free or uh, free four points of damage to kill something like intercessor. And you mm-hmm. want uh, intercessor is a bad example because they were reducing the crit damage. Still, doesn't matter. Uh, and the confidant can do so because he's not shooting. If you land that one hit in charge, he will mm-hmm. just because lack of saves in melee, he will deploy this damage and you will move on. Uh, and also that uh, thing that you can play. The main reason to take confidant is to not lose access to orders because. Vetgard is absurdly rely, uh, relying on their leader uh, and to be able to use your best operative there who is a uh, sergeant. He's the best one. Not spotter, not bomber, the surge. Does and your he... sergeant often take a Rosarius to keep himself alive? Yes, I was usually going because I, I was playing quite offensively with him, at least on some matchups, because you have to because you are stopping yep. this intercessor now, or you are dying, so <laughs> let's try to do it now. 
and Rosary is a game changer there. And it had also, there are basically only two operatives when Rosary have sense. The one is search and the uh, second one is uh, hardened because mm -hmm. he'll open. Yeah, the har yep. uh, but, basically the two models that can survive more fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. any punishment, too. any punishment. But in the end, uh, uh, search is better because eight wounds, Without feel no pain, but still he is not killing by critical from kiss. Three uh, plus on weapon skill, lethal five plus, like typical power weapon. It is nothing special, but when you are so heavily struggling into melee like a vet guard, it is special. Especially that he have that combo of uh, power weapon and plasma pistol. So yeah, I've seen the Rosarius make a lot of crazy swings. The one thing, I still think the Sergeant is the best, but I've dabbled a little bit with uh, bringing the Bruiser and giving him the Rosarius and just having fun times sending that guy into way more than he should handle and making it through crazy situations. Bruiser is never worth taking. You should throw it out from your roster. Never. Yeah, I think at the I think the problem with him is he was designed when they thought that three melee attacks with a good profile was maybe okay, but we've come a long way <laughs> in the melee combat mass. No, it, it's like he's not killing uh, because yeah. of the lack of damage. Uh, he's not parrying go uh, good enough because lack of uh, amount of lack attack. of hits. Yeah, yeah uh, he have only seven wounds with the rosary. It is a waste. Hardened is basically better in everything. What Bruiser is doing, Hardenet will do this better. Yeah. I think Unfortunately, the... I hate it because it is a dyna cool dynamic model. It is a creek, so still shitty, but the pose is quite right. Yeah, so. yeah. I think the, the thug on the Blooded was like the properly designed version of whatever yes. they thought the Bruiser should I be. I always Wait, tell is he... that... Yeah, because the bruiser, for listeners who don't know, because probably no one has ever seen this model on the table, is a three attack, four four damage, hits on Rosary threes, three. Vet guard. Oh, three three, even worse. Yeah, three, but it gets three. to do a just a scratch in melee, I think, right? One just a scratch yeah, but in only, every melee step. Only with but only normal. normal. Yeah. Uh, doesn't the bruiser have that too? No, no. So the bruiser, the bruiser is just a scratch in melee once once a game. So if you give it a Rosaris, we could do it twice. But the thug on the other end for the blooded is a four four damage, but it does minus one normal damage, so it just survives oh, wow. a lot more, or just what, minus one damage flat in all phases. So it just takes a lot more damage, and it's still a mace wielding model. So it's just like this is what they thought it was going to be good at early on in the game, and then this is where we are after a year and a half of play, basically. I mean, pack has four attacks. And this is ending the conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the four, the four and three attack difference is just too much. Yeah, and better yeah. damage. It is four, four, not uh, mm -hmm. three, three. Three, three is basically. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I don't want to talk about this. But it is PTSD <laughs> for me, like a bruiser. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, switching back to Poland just for a quick second. Are there any players from Poland or like basically the hometown heroes section where we talk about? You know, maybe a storyline from the Polish scene that you want to call out, you know, something outside of the competitive scene or maybe someone who started off maybe last year and they've gotten much better over time that you want to call out. Ooh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, very good players here. Really, a lot of. So yeah. Talk to talk to us about the, the heroes, uh, the heroes. There are a couple of drop zone players who are very capable, like Kamil, who is going for the Atlanta. Uh, we have also Łukasz Vnuk, who is my nemesis, because he is always, when he is playing uh, with me, you can hear it like a 20, 200 meters away from the table, because I am swearing so much. The amount of bullshit which is happening there. He is a very good player, just to be clear. Only elite good player. He is sucking with hordes heavily, but with elites here, he is playing very good. But the amount of bazinga which is happening with the dice, I am always telling that I will grab him because he's quite short and throw him to the trash bin, basically. And, <laughs> and this will be a justice. Uh, we have also other good players here, uh, here in Warsaw, at the higher spectrum. We have uh, Piotrek, who is playing Commandos. We have Michał Żywczyk, who is playing uh, Admech, or also Commandos, because Commandos are sexy now. 
As, uh, yeah. This is from the Warsaw. Uh, from Krakow, we have Amadeus, who is also good. From Wrocław, we have uh, Andrzej, who is also playing commandos. Uh, who I <laughs> uh, but sounds like from... sounds like a big commando problem in Poland right now. Uh, you, in this region of Europe, we usually have a problem with orcs, but don't worry, we are <laughs> always doing fine with that. Uh, <laughs> Neither of them are winning, so uh, still. But there are a problem always. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there are many good players here, many, many, and it will be only better, I think, uh, because for I am viewing that it is better for everybody that there are more and more very good players here, because you cannot get better if you are always the best without any issues. There have to be issues to improve. Uh, to adapt, to overcome somebody, etc., etc. And I am extremely happy about that, that I have so many talented rivals here. And now I will have to basically kill all of you so they don't hear that that I told anything good <laughs> about them. It's already it will, recorded. It's too late, Matt. <laughs> it, it will break my image. Sorry. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like a it sounds like it's been going really well over there. And commandos are making a resurgence worldwide. It sounds like now that they yeah. have the eleven operatives and the the somewhat okay matchups against the rest of the melee melee hordes, it definitely helps. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this buff gone too far a little bit, not too much, a little bit. Uh, I think that there are a couple of very minor things, basically, which are which are there in Commando's design, which shouldn't be there. But, uh, but as you said, with the Bruiser, it was the beginning of the game. Uh, so the designers were not sure a little bit about some things, how they will end up working. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we yeah. have to live with that at least for now. I, I mean, looking at something that. like... <laughs> yeah, looking at something like the Vet Guard Sergeant, I don't think we would allow that model anymore as far as like newer design. <laughs> to have both yeah, the Plasma yeah, Pistol and the yeah. Power Sword. Yeah, chain sword and plasma pistol or power sword with both and um, probably. But on the yeah. other hand, we would not allow the allow the things like bruisers, which are utterly useless. Correct. If you are yeah, taking yeah. that away from the search, somebody has to refill. And w when I'm watching this operative about the vet guard, I can see uh, that in the beginning it w there was they were not designed only as a shooting horde. They are operatives there which are. Sh Basically, for sure, were designed as a that semi melee support. Mm -hmm. But when the game was developing, developing, and uh, uh, designers received more knowledge with time, it simply haven't lived to the end of the day. And yeah. the bruiser, hardened, the confidant. Oh, my cat is coming. Sorry. Uh, are not capable melee fighters any longer on any real matchup. I can. I mean, they can beat Tau. Which is which is kind of like, like you could beat other vet guard models, you know, other GQ. Yeah, wow. Maybe. <laughs> very, 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 yeah. Such, no, such I, a uh, holiday for, for a guard, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the I easiest. Yeah, the easiest things to see is they used to give four attacks on threes with relentless, and they thought that would be a good melee profile. But the moment the intercessor showed up with five attacks in melee, it just deleted all of those models from ever being yeah, good good melee not, operators. You're not able to compete with them anyhow in melee. No. Uh, yeah. It it will change for better. So. Yeah. Yeah, and then we're on to our uh, our final section, Jason. Yeah, let's get nitty gritty with some with some deep cut tactics. Let's go into niche tactics. Niche tactics. Yeah, it's just like get nitty gritty with it and and like t talk about some down and dirty combos. Um, Inquisition, that's the new team that you've been playing. We haven't, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about cool Inquisition combos. You got anything there? Uh, very nice to think. Uh, if you set up it correctly, which is hard to set up it, but when it is done, it is basically evaporating every model from the game. Uh, is usage of uh, Arbitis as a detachment and their sniper after buff. And even today I was playing like that. Uh, so if you, for example, Orc, good example, Orc, uh, is coming to you to throw this dynamite, but you have the guy with the shield. So guy with the shield is just boo, 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 coming to Orc, saying hello, and he's standing there. And 
if you will uh, send a, que a query on this org and also you will bless with your psyker this, uh, this sniper who is somewhere there and you are playing with the sniper aggressively enough for him to be in the six inches to be capable or to shoot into melee combat because they still can it is basically evaporating with the little five plus uh, and p1 when the, when because of the support of the second thing it is evaporating and the general ability of the arbitis which is there that they can shoot into melee combat especially now after the buff when they are receiving the p1 it is also working for inquisition i think there are a lot of people who are not catching that this moment. Oh yes, that's true. That 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 is giving all of the Inquisition. Yes. Uh, so for it's listeners it's who don't know, let me, yeah, let me just level set for anyone who doesn't know what this is. Um, the Inquisition, when you take up the new squad, it brings in all of your rules if they are attached to the character sheets for yes. the model. So on the Exaction Squad, Ruthless Efficiency is their special ability which allows any friendly models to fire at things that are in melee combat as long as you're within six inches of your exaction squad pile. And they added a buff, so if you're doing it while within six, you get uh, P1, I believe. If you have a different operative within two inches of the target. Yes. So it can yeah. be in melee combat or near to it. And I with, so... the, with the uh, sniper, it is going completely bazinga. It is like... Pah! And yep. this is, you know, death, only death. So you've been, you found a lot of success using the Exaction Squad with the better shooting of the Inquisition then, yeah? The shooting and melee because uh, shield guys are quite a tar pit and Inquisition can give them something which the Exaction Squad is struggling a little bit on its own, so the offensive output. So you have, for example, Repentia. You are slowing down some melee fighter with the shield guy, uh, and Repentia is coming with the quarry and with the attacker reroll. She is hitting on three plus with two rerolls, and she have five six with brutal. So it is like even today I had a situation that there were three orcs because they try were they were struggling to kill one shield guy for some time. And two of them were on only two wounds because they both of them received double shotgun tap from other RBTs and rep and this shield guy basically in one moment died and the Repentia entered there and hit and roll one crit. So I've eliminated two orcs with rip because it is rip two also mm -hmm. uh, and killed the third one with the natural attacks. Uh, so there is a big utility, but again, Inquisition will be very beneficial for the players who know what they are doing. It is very hard to set it up correctly, to not expand your resources too easily, because most of the Inquisitorial agents are like Vedgard. Five plus save, seven wounds. Yep. They will be dying like flies. If you will not use school correctly, if you won't be exposing more uh, exaction squad, if you are taking them, uh, or even breachers, because four up saves is quite good, still. And yes. I mean, they also have a two up save. Yeah, with the the shield guy and uh, and disengage combined with the double uh, blocking. Great, great model. I am uh, with the breachers. I was always combing him with the uh, school, and. It was a, oh, a big, big cool. it was a big struggle always. For example, if there was an exposed point somewhere, I was putting barricade behind. So from the position of barricade, you were not able to score that, or you was, were mm. scoring, but you were in the front of vantage. So there were going the shield guy and uh, school somewhere in the heavy terrain, couple inches away, and it was always minus wise that one dice cover two plus save and wounds. Go on, try. Go and try me, yeah. So and uh, Inquisitions is many is many time about these little tricks which they can, uh, which uh, they can do. And also, yeah, it for... is worth remember uh, one last word about uh, RBTs that they have really good comms, really good com comms, guys. Yes, they have the second best comms right behind the Casterkin and the Scions, I guess technically. But the Casterkin and Scions are exactly the same. Uh, I think the Orc comms is really good also 
absolutely good operative. He can do free mission. He can take Choppa uh, and still he is a comms. So I think he is maybe better. But uh, still, our, our British one is uh, again very, very good one with this shotgun ability to shoot into combat and 4 plus save and being able to give that APL with only visibility. He is great and you can play quite offensively with him. So make him a distance so you, he can use the sh short range shotgun if anything will happen and still give that APL. He is like, great, great one, great one. More and more, yeah, more yeah. I play, I, more I like the police in, as a part of Inquisition, really. I think the police buff definitely gave them both as a standalone team and as an insilly option a lot more legs compared to where they were, you know, two months ago, where they were basically just not playable. <laughs> Potato, I can say. Uh, also, the, uh, the, the very funny thing is when you are playing uh, against Felgors and you are taking the crazy man who is switching off Frenzy, it is always worth Oh, right, because you could just turn off the ability and then they just yes. fall to the ground and die. Yes, and they are dying on Frenzy. And maybe it is not very competitive in the end because there are uh, operatives who are worth more, at least for now. <laughs> Uh, but uh, still, the face of your opponent is reward enough. Really, well, <laughs> it's like ah, yeah. what is happening here? I'm yeah. always just to, just hmm? to help clarify, uh, I, you're, the endurant combo I think on the Inquisition that you mentioned. I just wanted to like let people know because I don't know if anyone has really seen the abilities or remembers them right now. So you mentioned that you have the endurant, which is a two-up model with ten wounds from. The breacher side followed around yes. by a tome skull holding the sanctification aura right yes and then you have it behind a barricade so that to get if they want to get on the point they gotta get within two inches which means they're yes. in range of the tome skull which means that you have a two-up save on 10 wounds behind cover with a cover save and then you have sanctification which is whenever they're within two inches of the tome skull operative you get one less attack which means that even a plasma is not it's not necessarily going to kill some kill the endurance behind because it'll be on no, three on attacks. Three plus probably will, but on four plus probably won't. Correct. Yeah, on a three up maybe because getting three hits you can CP reroll yeah. consistently, but on a four it's basically not possible or not consistent anymore. Yeah, usually opponents are, good opponents are not taking these risks, and after yeah. that school is basically moving to the next position when the for example. Uh, point will be secured, it is moving to support your melee fighters. So again, when your opponent uh, who had, for example, four attacks uh, is charging you, he had only three, which is always a big problem for them. Yada, yada, yada. School is a great thing, and I think, uh, but but I think it has to be used uh, expensively. Like, you are going and actually using that. There is no point in t uh, keeping the school in the background. It has to yeah, be so you, you're, you're not a fan of the tome skull babysitting the servitor because you feel no, like you, it needs to be using the auras to do stuff. Uh, it is usable when you will expose this uh, servitor to take some fire, basically, to focus on him and the rest of the team will do something. I am always having fun about, about that because uh, uh, one servitor is taking care of a different servitor and it's like a Benny Hill situation, uh, but still. It happens, but I think there are better usages uh, yeah. of, of this. Really, much better usages. And don't hesitate to lose your school. This is your, in the end, this is like a bonus operative. You don't care too much in the end. And it can make a big difference. And I was trying playing against Inquisition. Many times eliminated uh, people with the, this aura, this defen uh, the defensive, uh, defensive aura of school. And there are like plenty situation when I know I would kill this operative, but the freaking servitor with the book denied me that kill. So it is really good. It is really good. Again, Inquisition is not like a vet guard on this level. It is not so tight to the points and it is not so defensive team. It is much easier to do an offensive push with uh, Inquisition. So school also have to be that there. And you have to plan it well because it cannot dash. It, it will not dash. It will just move the six inches. So you have to plan in the one turn where the school will be in another one. 
Yeah, I think that's a very hard thing for a lot of players. I think for a lot of newer players that knowing that the next turn has to be played on the turn before is definitely a thing that I see a lot of players struggle with. So it's a good note. But it will always be like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I think for a lot of players, I think when you're learning to get a hold of the game, you're very focused on how do I kill stuff this turn? But the next step up is your p positions are setting up for the next turn. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because, you, you know, there's like a lot of players, the first level up after they get shot on open is like, I'm going to go all conceal. And then you can't be all on conceal because next turn someone needs to be able to go do something. Yeah, Always good idea. Yeah. And there are everybody just running at your side. And why they are not afraid of us? <laughs> why is this happening? Why they are not stopping? Were there any other fun Inquisition tactics that you found useful that are specific to different ancillary options i know we've talked about breachers and the exaction but have you used vet guard or casterkin at all and I in those used, situations why i used casterkins and vet guards and i still think that the vet guards are better because they have bomb problem with the casterkin is that they have the best cons in the game but this is not a reason enough to take them yes in my opinion yeah uh, because in the end they are you are usually taking uh two gunners for example, one sniper and something different because hitting on to plus for Inquisition, uh, who is a, their a biggest issue is a rerolls, yeah, a lack of rerolls. Yes. So it makes sense. Uh, still, doesn't matter. Any two special weapons, guys. Uh, medic comes and the recon guy, and basically recon utility is ending after turn one usually because that ability to give no cover. It is okay, but usually it will not give you anything really and their weapons are four plus bolters so so with the hot shot uh, guns so it is not very special so from the five guys guys you are receiving only two de uh, dev, uh, dev dealers only two models can do actually something rest of them are support units and for inquisition which is uh, you already have a two supporting models there, so a school and the Psyker guy. Mm -hmm. It is too much and it is not worth it. You need more killing power. But basically, maybe Caster Kings will be usable against some elite teams. I don't know because of this uh, double AP APL tap, but I doubt. Uh, and Vets are better because they can bring the bomb, which is making a big difference. Uh, on uh, this is one thing, and uh, if they will resign from medic, they can also take hard on it, which is sometimes helpful to hold some points, especially that you can make him on some matchups quite decent crack grenade handler. So he's running, throwing that crack, and the next initiative, he is uh, next turn. I mean, he is able to survive something and return some damage. Still, I think RBTs and breachers are the best ones but vets are definitely also there and you can uh, trick somebody who will not expect them but yeah rbts and breaches i think are will be way to go for now do you have any do you have any room on the roster for the sisters on the offhand chance of playing against psychers or do you feel like you have enough tools I don't think to dip into the are such an issue now. Uh, this is one thing. The second thing is, for sisters, is there is not an issue that they are bad operatives because they are very good operatives. Uh, eight wounds, three plus save, uh, power weapon. Three up to hit, three up to hit or two up to hit, depending on what you're using. Yep. For today, I think they will never see the table. For tomorrow, hmm, I don't know. We will see. Uh, I never, uh, I haven't tried uh, them uh, still, how they will play after the changes uh, with the sisters, uh, but we will see still their main problem is that they don't have comms. And this is the problem yeah. of Inquisition into the attachments that, is not, I mean, the attachments are compensating that because two APL team without the source of the third APL is like doomed. Like, Much it, more predictable. Yeah, it will ever always struggle because you cannot go with the move that shoot. You cannot go with the move open door shoot. Oh, this one you can because you have servo school, but still only in one place. So, uh, but there are so many things which you are completely unable to do anything, 
and pe uh, people are usual good players are always keeping an eye on your comms and every good player is keeping comms as long as they can to without transferring APO um, unless it is very obvious that it will happen uh, to make your team as you said unpredictable and with the sisters without that comms it will be problem but if they would have comms there will be really really good it will be ultimate melee faction it will be maybe it will be an absurd even so five power weapons like that with other midi specialists from inquisitions which are quite good it will be oh too much yeah. good and, I, but, and you would be able to stall your opponents like if you're playing the other melee team you can cancel out their good move and then get the yeah. jump on them which is a i will fight big. twice no you won't no you won't sorry yeah yeah it, 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 but for today for today and probably for tomorrow also it won't be uh, it won't be the solution. If you want to go heavy melee with the Inquisition, I think still Breachers uh, with the hatch, uh, uh, Hatchet Guy and uh, Axe Jack is better option. And probably from Arbitis also. By Arbitis detachment you can also arrest somebody. Which is also... Oh yeah, the Castigator comes along and can arrest... Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you have him and now he has 8 wounds. So And, and, and he still has a shotgun, yeah? So and he is hitting on free plus and free plus is something which is you are targeting uh, on the Inquisition. I found myself that on the uh, on the Arbitis detachment, I am not taking the grenade launcher because four plus in this team is too much for me. I have already that on the shield, guys. I need free plus. I would more likely take a simple shotgun still. You're looking for reliability when you take yeah. the exaction squad. Yeah. yeah, you want to compensate the only big problem of this team. I would happily uh, exchange Nope, which I don't like this CP, uh, to, because it is taking toys away from the people and they don't like it, and it is reasonable that they don't like it, uh, for some additional real source. Make yeah, them I, was, like... I, I honestly think that, you know, as long as if they change it so that it costs more and more as you use it, I think it would be at least reasonable, because then it's not free, because right now it is free. <laughs> you just do it every turn. Change is what be it different, but it yeah. will be good. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing how all the teams shake out because I know a lot of players locally are not the happiest with how the cult balances, especially if you're playing on In the Dark. But I do think that on Open, both of the extremely powerful melee teams suffer a little bit just because their turn ones end up so much worse than they are in In the Dark. Where they're just uh, I think, for example, that goats have so many reasons. Uh, so many tools to avoid being shot only if the player have any kind of IQ in his head that it is still a problem on open play. You have a shaman with Six aura inches, for... Uh, three in it's a three-inch bubble on the, on the goats at least. Yeah, you have three plus invasive. You have still frenzy. No, no, no. They, they, are, they are a problem, but they won't be. This is the good point. But it will be solved. You know, that's a good note to end it on for everyone who's worried about Melee Summer. <laughs> yeah, were there any final call-outs about from the Polish scene or drop zone that you want to talk about, Matt, before we uh, split for the night? Uh, yeah, of course, I want to invite everybody, even if you are from quite far away, even if from US, uh, you are uh, invited for our tournaments. If you don't know when it will happen, just contact us via Facebook. Yeah, for ourselves, I know that we are kind of extreme here, but from ourselves, the Facebook is the main communication source. Uh, so there you can find Drops on Kill Team. And please don't hesitate to ask the questions. Sweet. Well, thanks for coming on. And thank you, listeners, for listening. We've got a... Don't forget, in case anyone wants just another Kill Team Gage, we have our merch link in the show notes. And we'll have all of Matt's socials on as well. So in case anyone is visiting Poland anytime soon, hit them up. Go play with some of the sweatiest Polish players we've ever heard of. 